This is a $15 skin in Fortnite. This is an $18 set in the finals, 31 things to it. This is a $50 knife in Valorant. And this is a collection event in Apex Legends where if you spend $260 to get all of the items, you'll get an heirloom for free. And if any or all of that sounded wild, this may sound like pro corporation, whatever, but we're part of the problem. We are the problem. We're also simultaneously the potential solution, but with how much we collectively spend, all we do is justify it. Because yes, somebody looked at this heirloom and spent $700 to buy out the whole event and get it in Apex. Maybe you Canadian, that's $962. You spent almost a band for a digital knife. And there's plenty of reasons people buy skins. I mean, it could just be that it's your favorite character in a hero shooter. Hero shooters are pretty common right now. Like for me, in Apex, that was Bangalore, that was Lifeline. I got plenty, I'm not saying I ain't buy no skins, I ain't spend no money. I'm part of the problem too. But like, these two characters alone account for probably like 75% of the skins I bought in that game. So it could be because of a character, it could be because it's an early season of game, you want something that's going to be like rare later on, like an early battle pass. Case in point, I got John Wick from the first season 3 I think. Could just be fear of missing out, FOMO, you weren't spending on planning money. You weren't planning on spending money, but this game got like 30 minutes left to it and you just decide to cop it. And the more you spend, the less likely you are to stop despite how high the prices are. So when it comes to us, just people playing the games, having a main game is way more common. So that basically isolates the marketplace you view. Like if a skin is expensive and Valorant is way cheaper in Halo, almost forgot that game was around. It doesn't matter to you because that's not the game you're gonna play. That's not the game you're gonna see the skin in all these marketplaces are completely independent of each other and when most playtime is going into one game as opposed to like a bunch like, like when i had a gamecube or a ps2 it was like ssx sonic riders mario strikers the mario party games i was getting whooped in mario baseball by my sister all the time but because having the main game is a lot more common and only being in one marketplace that you're buying skins from trying to compare the price from one game to the other as a reason to lower them it just doesn't it doesn't get far because not enough people are even gonna bring that up and push for that because valorant players don't have another place they can buy a shiny knife to spin around mid fight it's either get it out the store get it out the bundle where a bunch of skins are added up discounted from their individual prices and you get the bundle or they throw it to you in the night market off pure chance or you're like me you just eat skins out the floor but it really just gives games a lot more leeway like the potential consequences of them having high prices is so low that they really just can do whatever unless there's just a massive pushback. An example of that pushback is Apex. When they tried to raise their battle pass prices, they're gonna have two in one season and $10 cash, not in-game currency, $10 cash for each one. So you can't get it renewable just by buying it once. There was a meltdown on Twitter, probably other places too, but on Twitter and they reverted it. But if they didn't, that battle pass would be $20 cash a season. like. That was for real gonna happen why they are more mad about that than a 700 dollars collection event not really sure but they did it but yeah it takes a massive pushback to keep things the same let alone bring them down but there's also just a simple fact that one most player bases like the vast majority of player bases are casual so not gonna look at the twitter community of a game or like watch youtube videos about it. they probably just play it here and there and that's really it and people can do whatever they want with their money if you want to buy that 50 dollars knife that ain't got nothing to do with me honestly like if we really did collectively stop buying skin yeah the prices would come down they probably would but that's just not gonna happen because you can't realistically go around telling people what to do with their money especially when it comes to something so like unnecessary to life as a skin in a video game so it really take people collectively viewing skins as important enough to make this massive front about like we not copping nothing until skins are two dollars max or something like that but they're just not that important they're pure luxury i mean the games we play in of themselves are luxury so i feel like when it comes to skin prices only you can really do is just what's your limit what's your limit on the skin price 18 is what apex is for a gold skin kind of wild did i buy them yeah so that was my limit that was what i did i really only bought a skin every once in a while that's why i have so much of individual characters the collection events i was like no, because why am I buying all these skins for characters I don't even play? Like, I got mad Octane skins out of packs. Just off the packs they gave you from like Battle Passes, playing and whatever. That I was just like, bro, I'm never going to see these skins because I don't be playing Octane. So like, why would I go and buy skins for the character I don't play? That make no sense. Even with the heirlooms, like, I got Bangalore's because like, bro, that's who I'm, that's an heirloom I'm going to see. Same thing with Lifeline. Took two years to get it out of packs regularly. But if your limit is like $5, 
that's fair. It's probably not a lot out there like that, but I mean, the skins, they don't change any of these games anyway, so like you're cool. I know it's very anticlimactic, but I don't have the mindset of like, they're pricing these skins so high and it's just doing something like heinous to me. It's like, no, I don't have to buy it. Like right now, the finals is the game I play the most and I buy skins in that game. They're also a lot cheaper just compared to other games. So they're under my limit. So I buy a skin here and there, but I mean, if they were to just triple everything, like that gym membership I had, that pissed me off. But like, if they were to triple everything, I'd be like, okay, that's too much. I'm not gonna buy nothing no more. Oh well. But like, when people like get all up in arms about it, it's like, what's really gonna happen if you don't buy no more skins? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's like people got all mad about Marquez Brownlee and his app panels, the wallpaper app. It's like, it's only like this many people that really would purchase a wallpaper in general, let alone from his app specifically. Like if you do want to cop it, that's an option, it's there. Maybe this didn't relate as much as I thought it did, but I wrote it down, so there it is. But yeah, I had the idea for this video from a comment I got about skins still being too expensive and they should be like a dollar. And I'm like, that's too, that's very, very, very unrealistic. Just expecting people to just stop paying for skins at the prices they're at, at whatever game they are right now. Like it's just not gonna happen, so. If a dollar is your limit, you're not buying skins. But hey, you're not spending money now, that's cool. But like I said, I buy skins in the finals and the microtransaction, the microtransaction system they got going on, I think they perfected it personally and I made a video about it, it's right here. Sub to the channel, I will see you there. God bless, bye. I did it. Ah!